Hola, this is Yev Willy, not CM Punk. Welcome to another classic modern film review. Coming up next, the following classic and modern film reviews will be based on the theme of Odd Couple. These are based on romance films with strange looking couple that don't equally match with each other. They might look cute and desperately in love with each other on screen, but in real life they would just seem as odd and strange. So from the classics review, let's start off with Beauty and the Beast. Be Wait, 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 no, 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 you got me confused there. No, I'm not talking about that version. I'm talking about the French version of Le Belle et la Bête. If there was a festival to crown the king and queen of the most classic romantic odd couple, Beauty and the Beast would definitely win for having a man animal and a hot chick falling in love. Beauty and the Beast is a French book known as Le Belle et la Bête, written by Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont in 1740 or 1756, I'm not sure about the date. In 1946, it would debut in the cinema for the first time in this French version of Le Belle et la Bête. Many are familiarized with the Disney version with the memorable songs, the talking Lumiere and Gaston. Only in this version, it has none of that, but it has its own uniqueness that makes it into a classic not just in French cinema, but in overall cinema. The story follows closely to the book about a beautiful French woman named Belle. <laughs> yeah, who named you that, the Smurfs? Who takes the place of his father to die in the hands of an enchanted beast because he took a rose from him to give it as a gift to Belle. She lives in the beast's enchanted castle where he falls in love with her. Every day he asks her to be his wife in order for the spell to be broken so he can return to his human form. But her answer is the same refusal as every day. As the day goes by, they develop a relationship not of love at first, but of affection for one another. Belle gets ill to go back home to see his ill father again. The beast agrees on the condition that she returns in a week or he will die out of heartbrokenness. Even though this is a very old school movie with a very outdated plot, I like it a, a lot. One thing it manages pretty well is it doesn't hide the fact that it's a fantasy story. It opens up acknowledging that this story doesn't make any sense, but just go with it. And for what they had, I thought they managed the fantasy very well. Though I think the reasons for the beast to be enchanted are very weak. I like the gothic atmosphere for what they had at that time with the moving statues and candles. I still don't know how did they do that and it still looks impressive. They used the shadows in this black and white film in their advantage to give an impressive cinematography look. I would have hoped that they would have shown the entire castle in all of its dark and gloomy glory, but we just see a few glimpses of it and some few rooms inside of it, so it's not that special. Now everyone knows the story of Beauty and the Beast, but not many are familiarized with the original story. It's not different from the classical tale of the princess and prince falling in love and living happily ever after, only this time the princess of beast and the princess is a peasant woman. Belle in this version it's not so different from many other variations. She's humble, selfless, caring and kind, but she can also be a hard person that tells the cold truth the way it is. She's very feminine, but is a very strong woman in character. The Beast is the main event of this movie. Yeah. On dit la bête. Je n'aime pas les compliments. The actor who plays the role has so much to work with. He plays the Beast, the Prince, and even the antagonist known as Ebenant, the other subplot love affair of Belle. Though I will say, I was disappointed too that it was him. I find it intriguing how this story has developed over the years with people giving the image of the Beast a very different interpretation. In this version, he's a cat looking animal. I would lie if I had to say that I like his wardrobe better than his cat costume design. It gives him a statue of greatness and intimidacy, though the costume looked great. Beast and Belle together with their costumes look like a tragic gothic painting come to life. However, he doesn't portray a beastly character as many would expect but a very emotional softball. He doesn't shout out or purposely intimidate Belle, instead the roles are switched around. He is the one intimidated of her for witnessing his beast-like aspect and behavior.
Belle is the one that responds harshly to the beast and doesn't hide the fact that she's repulsed by his heinous look, and Beast just takes it. He's even willing to give all of his treasures to her, just out of love. Talk about a pussycat. He's a tormented figure because he knows what he is and he doesn't hide it. It hurts him that the fact that nobody else can see him other than a monster. Which leads to the obvious theme of the movie about who is the monster and who is the man. This gives more sympathy to the beast and an understanding of Belle's reason to reject him. But through time, she begins to notice the good side of Beast and humbleness that makes it easier to approach him. While she's back home, she reflects that there is something about the Beast that is beautiful. They both want something that at the same time is difficult to obtain. Belle wants to go back and see his father again, but doesn't want to hurt the Beast's feelings for leaving him. While Beast doesn't want her to leave, but would only show that she doesn't love her if he doesn't let her go. They are an odd couple, not just because of the obvious reason it's a human and an animal falling in love, but because they both feel like they have to love each other by force without anyone putting a gun to their heads. He must love her in order to be human again, and she must love him, mostly out of pity, in order to regain her freedom back. This makes the relationship more interesting and it gives an understanding of the choices they take, even if they're not logical. Even in fantasy standards, the romance makes sense and it doesn't come out sugarcoated but more like a forced love story and I think they achieve it very well since we don't usually hear these type of stories ever. This movie is beautiful to look at and it's intriguing to see the two main characters conflicting interaction. The special effects look great but not all of them hold up pretty well. The dialogue is spoken with such weight that you can give credit to how they used to say their lines those days. The characters are very classical and the story is great. Though we've heard it over again, it looked very new at that time that the man is the damsel in distress and the woman is the heroine of the story. She's the literal beauty and symbolic beauty of goodness that turns the ugliness of someone else into beauty through care and kindness which leads to the obvious and another theme of the movie that even the most beautiful can be ugly from inside and the ugliest can be more beautiful. It's a classic tale that has still lived up to this date and it's still getting new adaptations. I truly enjoyed Le Belle et la Bête as sure it holds up strong into the classic list and surely holds strong in my list as well. I say you should see it and you should check it out and hopefully you can like it as much as I did. I give it 8 out of 10 stars. So those are my thoughts of Le Belle et la Bête. If you liked it you can comment or subscribe or like my videos and if you didn't like it Please click down that thumbs down button right there in my video down there. So that's it for today. Ciao.